women represent a rapidly growing subset of patients with alcohol-associated liver disease. Furthermore, women develop liver disease with lesser alcohol exposure and suffer worse disease as compared to men. This review article explores the increasing prevalence of alcohol-associated liver disease in women, reasons for changing patterns in alcohol consumption and liver disease development, proposed mechanisms of sex-specific differences in alcohol metabolism, and sex differences in treatment enrollment and response. My name is Camille Kieser, and I'm a resident physician in the Department of Internal Medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. We wrote an article entitled Sex Differences in Alcohol-Associated Liver Disease that will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Alcohol use disorder and alcohol-associated liver disease are a growing cause of morbidity and mortality in patients in the United States and throughout the world. Men have been shown to consistently surpass women in drinking frequency, quantity, and rate of binge drinking. However, this gender gap in alcohol consumption is narrowing. Differences in alcohol consumption aside, women develop alcohol-associated liver disease with lesser exposure and suffer worse disease than their male counterparts. For any given level of alcohol intake, women have been shown to have a higher risk of developing alcohol-associated liver disease. Furthermore, women have a more rapid progression to cirrhosis as compared to men. Increasing overall prevalence of obesity and increasing bariatric surgery in women are possible contributors to this increasing number of women who are affected by alcohol-associated liver disease. There are multiple proposed mechanisms that help account for the development of more severe alcohol-associated liver disease in women. For equal alcohol intake, women develop higher blood alcohol levels compared to men. The reason for this is multifactorial. Generally, women have lower body weight than men. Therefore, the same alcohol consumption results in higher serum alcohol levels. Additionally, women have smaller body water content per kilogram of body weight, leading to a smaller volume of distribution. Alcohol is eliminated from the body primarily through oxidation via the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, which is located throughout the gastrointestinal tract and the liver. Alcohol-related liver injury is caused by alcohol metabolism via the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase that produces the hepatotoxic acetaldehyde. Women have been shown to have less gastric alcohol dehydrogenase than men. Women also have been shown to have slower gastric emptying of alcohol. This leads to increased bioavailability of alcohol in women. There are also hormonal differences between men and women that lead to differences in alcohol-associated liver disease. Estrogen modulates liver activity via estrogen receptors on hepatic cells. Chronic alcohol consumption has been shown to increase estrogen receptor expression in male rodent models. In these studies, the most significant liver injury occurred under the influence of high estrogen and low testosterone. Estrogen also stimulates growth hormone secretion. Growth hormone increases hepatic alcohol dehydrogenase activity. Rodent studies demonstrate higher hepatic alcohol dehydrogenase activity in females, and it is hypothesized that this leads to increased accumulation of toxic acetaldehyde. Excessive alcohol consumption disrupts the gastrointestinal barrier and promotes bacterial translocation from the gastrointestinal lumen into the portal vein. Endotoxin is a lipopolysaccharide, part of the outer wall of gram-negative bacteria. Kupfer cells are macrophages localized to the liver, and one of the many functions of these cells is to remove endotoxin, which produces pro-inflammatory cytokines and reactive oxygen species. Rodent models have shown that estrogen sensitizes kupfer cells to lipopolysaccharide, resulting in increased accumulation of pro-inflammatory cytokines. While there are significant differences between the sexes in alcohol metabolism and the development and severity of alcohol-associated liver disease, abstinence from alcohol is the cornerstone of therapy in both men and women. Only a small fraction of patients with alcohol use disorder seek treatment. There's a relatively low proportion of female participants in substance abuse treatment programs. Women are also more likely than men to have a history of sexual and physical abuse. This trauma may make women less likely to enroll in male predominant addiction treatment programs. Alcoholics Anonymous, or AA, is a widespread, well-known, and accessible alcohol treatment program in the United States. Studies have shown that AA is likely as effective for women and men. However, there may be differences for its efficacy between the sexes. Few studies are available to evaluate women's response to pharmacotherapy, and men are disproportionately represented in alcohol-related clinical trials. 
However, the avail available literature indicates that women are likely to benefit from pharmacotherapy at a rate similar to their male counterparts. So for our takeaways, there's a significant body of research demonstrating increased susceptibility to alcohol-associated liver disease in women as compared to men. As the gap in alcohol consumption between men and women continues to narrow, there will be increasing public health consequences related to alcohol-associated liver disease in women. More studies are needed to further delineate the mechanistic differences in alcohol metabolism between the sexes and potential contributing variables, such as BMI and history of bariatric surgery, as these may be opportunities for prevention and treatment in the future. In order for any intervention to be meaningful, patients have to be able to maintain sobriety from alcohol and effective and accessible treatment programs are integral. While addiction treatment programs are more frequently attended by male patients and more research needs to be done on the efficacy of addiction treatment programs and pharmacotherapy in women, the available literature does favor that women benefit from intervention even though motivations for participation and barriers to care may differ. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.